tell you guys. Um, so, I wanted to just talk to you guys about um, people bondage. Um, I want to just preface this first by saying that, look, I'm also struggling with this. And through my journey of, you know, going through it, God is teaching me some stuff. So, I just wanted to um, tell you what God is teaching me along my process as well. So, I'm not here to judge anybody. Um, I'm not here to condemn you or anything like that. Um, but there are two things that I'm noticing in the body. And, you know, it irks me because... Um, I feel like a lot of a lot of um, things that we learn in church is rooted in pride, and that is not of God. That is of the devil. <laughs> That's of the enemy. And um, so I'll just go ahead and just start. Uh, I'll I'll give two examples of the people bondage that um, concerns me. The first one, I'll talk about the friends, and I will use uh, Paul. Um, the Holy Spirit had already told Paul that he was going to be faced with um, going to jail and some struggles that he was going to go, go through on his journey, I believe it was, to Rome. Um, and um, a prophet had came to, uh, had came to Paul. Hey, hey. What up? The prophet had came to Paul and told Paul that he tied, so this is what the prophet did. The prophet took, took a belt from Paul, wrapped the belt around his hands and his legs, and he said, this is what you're going to be enduring. And the people, his friends, people who, his, you know, his uh, church, you know, uh, the people he fellowship with, they tried to warn him and say, no, 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 don't go, don't go, because they were concerned for his safety. But Paul said, hey, I am ready to die for the gospel. And I really do, I really do believe that by the Holy Spirit, Paul stated that, you know, how can this flesh be ready to die? You know, um, usually this flesh doesn't want to die. This flesh wants to live. And, and, and I believe that by the Holy Spirit, Paul was like, no, I'm ready to die for this thing. And um, so anyways, um, in that instance, you know, a lot of times we have colleagues, we have friends, we have people who are in our circle that mean us well. And, you know, especially in the church world, we will hold our friendships and our relationships in a high regard, and sometimes if we're not careful, um, if we're not careful, if we value um, their their opinion or their wisdom over the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, then that can be a hindrance of our growth. And um, not only that, um, we're not just um, disobeying for the heck of it. We're you know we're we're disobeying God, and. Um, I know that word disobedience is such a strong word, but it's the truth. You know, it's something that I'm struggling with as well. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we must um, fear God over man. We must listen to the Holy Spirit over uh, man. And, you know, it was Paul's purpose to suffer. Even when he was first called by Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ told him, you must suffer for my name. So Jesus already like let him know from jump what his journey um, um, as far as preaching the gospel was going to be. It was going to be a life of suffering. And, um, you know, Paul took that on, you know. So this is why anybody who, I don't care who it is, if it's your, you know, um, your, your friends, I don't care if they've been your friend for 20 years, if what they're saying to you is not um, by the authority of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm sorry, you know, God's authority must reign over your life. This is why, this is why we must make God 
uh, Jesus our Lord. And this is why this is why we say he's my Lord and Savior, because when someone's Lord over your life, you have given them um, the authority over every area over your life. You know, and that even means authority over the opinions of people who are close to you. And I also want to do the the next example, which is um, your parents. There's a lot of people that I know that, you know, they're PKs. Um, they've grown up in the church or their, their, their mom and dad has been a deacon or, you know, or, you know, their parents or whoever um, is a prophet or whatever. And, you know, yes, the Bible tells us to obey our parents, but we also have to read the Bible in totality and not, um, exclusivity. We have to be inclusive and not exclusive when we read the word of God. And if we read the word in its entirety, the word of God tells us once again, that we have to, uh, fear God over man. And if we're going to fear God over man, man includes your mother, your daddy, your grandma, your sister, your brother. You know, Jesus said, I have come to, uh, you know, to bring a wedge between uh, father and son, mother and daughter. This is what Jesus said. And, and what that means is he didn't come to cause division necessarily, but he has come that we, if it boils down to it, if we have to forsake our mother and our father to follow Christ, then the children of the Most High God, Jesus Christ, we will follow Him above everybody. When 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 the Word of God says, uh, "My sheep know My voice, and a stranger they will not follow." And let me tell you something: if your mom and your dad or whoever is talking to you, and you don't hear the voice of God in their lips, you do not follow them. They are, a, that's a stranger talking to you because even if they, even if you've known them, you know, your mom or your dad or whatever, your whole life, whatever they say, if it's not by the authority of the Holy Spirit, that's a stranger talking to you and you do not need to listen to them. That is the enemy. The enemy is a stranger. He is not your friend. You know, he is not here to, um, um, do you good. Okay. He does not want you to do the will of the father and Jesus when he was on earth, he was the perfect example of what a disciple should be, of what a servant should be, of what a, a, a child of God should be. And, 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 and above what uh, people said, even Jesus forsook his mother. You know, when, when, when his mother uh, um, asked him, and this is why Jesus was, um, I think he was preaching or I think he was doing some type of miracle. I'm not sure. But, you know, he was out doing his father's will and his mother asked to see Jesus and Jesus said who is my mother who is my father he said these are the people and he pointed to his disciples these are my brothers these are the people who I'm supposed to be around right now so basically what he was saying is mom I know that you know you know you I came out of your womb but ultimately my father has authority a higher authority than what you want me to do right now and this is for all the PKs. This is for all of the people who have parents in ministry or, you know, people who um, have influence in, in, in your life, period. If what they say is not by, I'm, I'm going to stress this, if what they say is not by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, they are a stranger. I don't, and like I said, I don't care if you've known them all your life. They are a stranger talking to you. And this is not to, um, uh, cause confusion because some people may think that, oh, well, this is, this is an act of, uh, defiance and blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. You know, when, um, the apostles were, um, were, were, um, were brought by the leaders of that day because they were preaching Jesus and the leader said, okay, we're going to let you go, but you cannot preach Jesus anymore. These were the leaders. These were the leaders of the Mosaic law. These were the leaders of these were their these were the leaders of the time, you know what I'm saying? And um, the apostles said they said, "Who are we to fear, God or man?" And 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 I think that's just so freaking like awesome, um, um, because they were willing to look uh, like rebels to man, but really they were being obedient to Christ. 
and we have to be obedient to Christ even until death and that's a harsh thing to say but it's so true um, and, and God will help us you know uh, will help us to realize just how serious it is to take the Word of God over man so anyways um, I, I could go on and on about this and uh, like I said you know this is I'm, I'm not I don't I want to stress this I'm not saying this to be just defiant just 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 because no but if you get to know the father and if you read his word and you see that there's somebody that's saying something that is contrary to the word of God then you may want to you may want to really consider going to the father and saying God what do you want me to do they're saying something that's against your word how should I handle this let God reign in your life let his authority reign in your life. And I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to myself. So I love you guys, and um, I hope you guys have a good, good, good day. All right, I'm about to start my, my work. Bye.